Hello, my name is Tyler Seawright from San Jose State University, Dr. Furman, ME106 Mechatronics class. And for my term project, I designed and built a temperature regulated 3D printer enclosure. So ordinary 3D printers are normally open and they have limitations when it comes to materials. Certain materials like ABS require specific conditions in order to reliably print. They need a 30 to 40 degrees Celsius ambient temperature, no drafts of cold air or hot air, any types of temperature variation, and they require a heated build plate. When you print with ABS on an open 3D printer, you can encounter problems such as layer separation or warping caused by temperature differences in the environment and the layers. So this is my solution. It is a enclosure featuring custom set temperatures from 18 to 15 degrees, 50 degrees Celsius with corrective temperature adjustment down to plus or minus one degree Celsius. It also features controllable lighting, life statistics, warnings and indicators, a user interface, and all of it plugs into the wall with just one socket. It has some extra features such as my first 3D printed design as a Arduino mount to the printer. And overall, the printer is heavily modified with um, really nothing stock except for the frame and it uses OctoPrint, meaning I can print remotely. Inside the enclosure, I have a few components such as the fan vents. You can see in the green at the top left and back right. And you can see all of the wires coming from the top to power the rest of the enclosure components. They're clipped to the walls with these um, very handy cable clips to keep them out of the way of the rest of the printer. So I had some design specifications that I followed when making this project. I wanted a internal temperature tolerance of two degrees Celsius. I wanted the enclosure to fit the minimum printer dimensions. I wanted a maximum cost of $200, which I really stressed because uh, the only other enclosure on the market that you can buy is $250 and it is just a box. And I also wanted printer, I also wanted print visibility so I wanted the front door to have a window. Some of the components I used in this project is a FM4E, which is the Adafruit Feather M4 Express board as my microcontroller. I also used a Arduino Uno and some other electrical components such as a th thermistor, servo motors, fans, 16 by two LCD display, LED light strips, buttons, potentiometers, and some buck converters for the power. So here's my system block diagram. You can see mostly everything communicates with the Adafruit Feather and everything is powered from the printer power supply. From the mechanical side, I had a concept sketch from February where I showed a lot of the features I wanted to include in this project. Unfortunately, I didn't include all of them as not really all were required, such as the soundproof foam. Uh, the printer was quite enough while printing that I didn't need it. And I didn't need the filament holder. Um, that might be later for keeping filament dry and that's a um, separate topic. Other features I did include are the clear window hinges, the interface, uh, the latching door and the feet. And then on the right side, I have my CAD design, um, kind of a mock-up of what I wanted the enclosure to look like before I built it. So for the mechanical component side, I had two major um, subsystems. One are the fan vents, which can open and close, and the filament sensor, which I will go into more detail now. So the fan vents, they have two states. They can either be open or closed, and they use a rocker slider mechanism inside to control the mechanism. And the fans will turn on after the mechanism has opened or off, after, uh, before the mechanism has closed. And the filament sensor works a little bit differently. Its purpose is to sense whether or not filament is present going to the printer, because otherwise the printer has no way of knowing if filament is going to the extruder, and it will continue to print even if filament is out. So the idea here is I wanted to give the printer some capability of sensing whether or not filament is going so that it can stop the printer and maybe pause it when the filament roll runs out or if it gets cut or tangled, if it stops for any reason. 
So inside the filament sensor, I have a roller switch that is press fit in. And on the right side, I show before I install any of the electrical components, um, if I were to pull the filament out, the roller switch would be able to extend and change angle so it would be open and when the filament is present it is closed and it is designed in such a way that when you push the filament in it automatically um, closes the switch. Now if you pull out the filament the green light on the top shown on the left figure will actually illuminate because it allows the current to flow through the switch at that time. Here's my entire schematic for the electrical systems. Just like the system block diagram, everything is controlled mostly from the Adafruit Feather, which is the FM4E. I also use a ULN2003 for my power control. That will power the lights, the fans, all from a, a signal from the FM4E or the Arduino. I also have two servo motors in addition to the two fans, which go together in the fan vents. Powering the entire enclosure system, I use the 3D printer power supply, which is stepped down in voltage by the LM2596 buck converters, one to five volts and then the other to 12 for different components. I also use a LCD display in this project, which took up a lot of pins on the FM4E, but it was worth it for the amount of data I could display live. Other things to note are the voltage dividers I used with resistors like R2 and the thermistor at the top left of the schematic. And I also used uh, some current limiting resistors when using buttons, also on the left side. So the control panel houses most of the electrical components, including the Adafruit feather and a lot of the circuitry that goes into the logic controlling this system. The control panel has the LCD display at the top left and two buttons on the top right, along with a potentiometer that functions as a temperature input knob. The left button controls the LCD screen so you can cycle through different um, menus and the right button controls the enclosure lighting. There are four LEDs at the bottom and each one indicates some status of the enclosure, such as overheating on the left, filament, cooling, and the lights. Now on the back side of the panel you can see these custom mounts that I designed and 3D printed for it and it just press fits right onto the panel base. So since this enclosure is temperature regulated I wanted to show some different cooling states. So on the on the left side the current ambient temperature inside the enclosure is 21 degrees celsius and since the enclosure temperature is set to be higher than 21 degrees Celsius, cooling is not on. So you can see that the, the waves icon, that LED is not on, meaning the cooling is off and the fans are off. But then as soon as I set the temperature lower than the current enclosure temperature, it means that the inside of the enclosure is too hot. So the cooling has to turn on to reduce the temperature. Now, if the temperature falls, if I set the temperature lower by a certain amount, which is actually two and a half degrees. I call that overheating and the overheat indicator turns on and the cooling is still on. Although nothing changes with cooling, it's just on or off. It's just a indication that the enclosure is overheating. This is inside the control panel. There's kind of a lot of wires going on in here. Um, all of this was wired beforehand in a expanded state and then condensed into this control panel. Um, it really helped a lot to label which wire is which, so to keep voltages separate or to um, follow the wires back to where they're going when troubleshooting. Now to power the enclosure, I had to use a voltage bus and two buck converters. As shown in the schematic, I stepped down the 24 volts to five volts and 12 volts. And these are organized in this um, buck converter housing, which plugs directly into the printer power supply in parallel with the printer. You can see I also included labels on the 3D print for ground, 24 volts, 12 volts, and 5 volts. From the software side, this program is very large. It's about almost 400 lines of code, 
uh, combined between two programs, one running on the Feather and one running on the Arduino. For the Feather, it goes through a loop in which it samples an input, it checks a condition, and then it makes a decision, and then it will sample the next input, check the condition, and then make a decision and continue through all of the inputs. And after all of that, it will indicate on the LEDs um, on the panel what's happening and then also display the data live on the LCD depending on which screen you're in. <clears throat> For the Arduino, it's a little bit simpler because the Arduino only needs to power the servo and the fans. So all it does is it will open the fan vents if it receives a high signal from the Adafruit Feather and then it will turn on the fans. And if it receives a low signal, it will turn off the fans and then close the servo vents. Um, the Arduino one is very simple, so I won't talk about that one too much. So like I said before, the Adafruit Feather just checks the sensor, makes a decision, performs an action, repeats for all of the decisions, and then displays the data in a continuous loop. So here I just wanted to show my main loop for my Adafruit Feather program. I'm using the Arduino C code for this project. Um, first, I just check the time and I set my static variables so that I can use them each loop. Um, and then I read the light switch pin, which is the button on the um, upper right side of the enclosure pan control panel. So I, I just check if it's pressed and I use that as a toggle switch um, just by pressing the button. Then I check the temperatures, I do some calculations on the temperatures, and then I determine whether or not I need to turn on the fans. I check the filament, and then after all of that, I indicate uh, what's going on with the LEDs, and I display data to the LCD display. Some challenges with this project include there were a limited number of pins on the Adafruit Feather, and um, this project really used a lot of pins, so I think I could lose some of the software components and just reuse some of the pins which control things that are similar such as uh, the lights turning on. I can just use the same pin to turn on the lights as to power the indicator LED maybe in the future. Um, but it's also good verification that the program is working uh, properly. I also had an issue controlling the servos. So with the Adafruit Feather, the servo.h library would not compile um, for the SAMD51 Adafruit Feather uh, processor. So I had to use an Arduino if I wanted to drive a servo with the Arduino code. And I also wanted to print, I also wanted to pause prints when the filament runs out, which would require some extra learning from OctoPrint, which is a little bit beyond the scope of this class, but I will be working on that in the future. So now I will show a demonstration video and it's about one minute and it should show all the components that I talked about. 